Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel and this series of videos related with advanced power system analysis. As you must be aware, I am creating this series of videos about dynamic modeling concepts in Power Factory and this is the second video. Um, the first one was related about the motivation of uh, using the excellent simulation language uh, DSL and I as I started before DSL is basically coming to add a new functionalities inside Power Factory and it's basically to create new dynamic models that can be used for RMS and AMT simulations but what is my plan today my plan today I have again a very short video um, and today what I will discuss is basically the, um, a, a very general introduction about the modeling philosophy inside uh, the Excellent Power Factory with regard to the DSL, okay? Uh, the first thing that you must understand is that DSL as a, as a language has basically two features and one of them is flexibility and the second one is uh, inherence and reuse okay um, as you must be aware uh, the excellent power factory is it's created using object oriented approach okay and because this object oriented approach you have the the opportunity to use that approach and take the best of that and mm, that kind of things uh, that that kind of approach allowed you basically to use one of the features that is the inheritance and the reuse okay what what i can tell you is that um if you are familiar with the Excellent Power Factory, you must understand that um, inside inside the network we have objects. Everything inside Power Factory is an object. Okay, here for instance, this is the graphical object that you will see in the network model. Okay, this is the graphical representation. However, in the database we have two different kind of objects. We have the elements and we have the types. Okay, um, what I trying to tell you is that the basic principle that is inside Power Factory about the use of types, elements, objects, and the location in the library and the network, uh, the, the network data is basically the same approach that is used for DSL, okay? And, and regarding flexibility, uh, the Xilin, uh, make a very made a very important uh, a very important uh, development when they create DSL. And one of the most important feature is that the concept is so so simple in concept, but that allow to create very complex dynamic models. Okay. What I will do now is just talk about those two features, flexibility. Uh, DSL, DSL is basically a, um, a simulation language. It's a language that we uh, that Dixieland create for the users that allow the users to create new models. Then, then they can be translated into the um, Power Factory language inside and allowed the 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 program to solve the dynamic model that you create together with the equations and the models that Power Factory already have, okay? What I'm trying to say is that the DSL is basic, is basically an object-oriented uh, development, and that allow creating from very simple models until the most complex models that you can think about. And the interesting thing is that you can reuse those models one together with the other one with the other one. And you can evolve embedding models and controllers and embedding those uh, control loops and those models. You can create very complex, very complex uh, 
structures, okay? In the next video, I will talk more about the objects, but something that you need to understand, the objects related with DSL, I, I clarify. In the next video, I will go more into details about the objects that they are used for DSL, um, uh, for DSL, for creating DSL models, okay? But this, the important thing that you must understand is that there is a possibility of using blocks and those blocks inside they have equations okay and those equations those equations are uh, basically writing using the Dixieland simulation language okay something that you must understand is every single block require equations inside in order to work okay and the thing is you can start with very basic mod uh, very basic blocks with very basic uh, definitions and then you can interconnect and use more and more of those blocks and you can create very very complex models okay um what is interesting is that you can combine the use of those blocks with equation inside and then power factory will convert automatically convert this set of equations into something that can be used inside the Xilin during the time domain simulation. At this moment, I will not go in full details because I have a full class to talk about the different kind of objects that we have inside DSL. But what you can understand is that we can go for very abstract and generic a representation of our complex model starting from the composite model then going inside and using equations uh, to create the model definition and finally we can create what we know as a common model that that is the last interface between the dynamic model created by the user interconnected to the network elements and providing the face of this model to the user okay later i will spend more time talking about of those very specific objects with more description and so on but this is what i want that you understand at the moment the combination of all those objects is what is creating a real functional model dynamic model inside power factory okay the second feature that I would like to cover today is the inheritance and reuse, okay? And you must be aware that Power Factory is very, very handy in that sense. As Power Factory uses an object-oriented approach, as Power Factory uses this approach, as a consequence, we have the opportunity, we have the opportunity to to use the same approach for the DSL, okay? What you need to understand is inside Power Factory, there are basically two basic objects. Some of them are located into the library and they receive the name type and other elements and other objects that receive the name elements and they are located into the grid, okay? And something that I, I, I would like that you start to pay attention is regarding the colors and also regarding the object names, okay? For instance, all of you are familiar about the use of the, uh, uh, the this kind of basic network objects, okay? And in this case, for instance, if we have a transformer and this transformer uh, it's installed inside the network, this transformer must be connected with two different objects. One object is the element and over there is represented representing the transformer itself for instance here you can you can define what is the current or actual tap position in the transformer but on the other hand we have an object that is located at the equipment type library and this is the type and this type is including all the data that define the model the rate power the rate frequency the transformer ratio the number of taps the connection and so on okay this kind of situation is also happening when we are using DSL. Uh, 
as I show in this slide over here, you must realize that I use the red color here to represent the composite model frame and the model definition. And here I use the green color to represent the common model. And the reason is we have the same simil similarity. The common model will be located basically at the network data. It will be the phase between the model and the user. It will be connecting the model that the user defined with the network element. And on the other hand, we will have the composite model, the block definitions that they will be located at the library and they will have red color as characteristic and we can reuse them. OK, what does mean that? What does mean reusing? Well, what is meaning is something very simple. For instance, coming back to the sample for the transformer, we can have 100 transformer and all of them will have the same electric specification. 250 MBA, 50 Hertz, 150 to 230 KB and so on. What I'm trying to say is inside your network, you can have 100 transformer, but all the transformer will have the same electrical characteristics. And we can reuse the type in order to create the 100 transformer. Then those transformers can have different tap position and can be connected in different places inside the network, but all of them will have the same parameters coming from the type. Well, that is the same situation. That is the same situation for DSL. In DSL, we will have some basic, some basic objects like the composite model and the model definition that they can be reused in different places. In, in, in a next video, I will show you the most basic way to create a DSL. And from there, you can understand how we can reuse that. One very basic example that not much, use, uh, not much um, users think about is the governor or the AVR. I mean, the synchronous machine controllers. The synchronous machine controllers, they are DSL models that they are reused. And I will cover more about that in my next video. Okay, um, I have created this short version of those videos for you. Please stay tuned. And this is the end of part number two. In this part, we cover the, the basic uh, and the general um, understanding about the philosophy of the DSL modeling, talking about the flexibility that is allowed with the, this kind of modeling and also the, uh, the, the features coming from the object-oriented approach, inheritance and the reuse. Thank you very much for watching this video. See you in the next one. In the next one, I will discuss more about the different objects that you can create using uh, using uh, DSL, and we will keep going with this series of video. Thank you very much. Bye now.